I know churches in the 70s that grew from 100 people to 1,000 people in a matter of two or three months. I know of, I know of a young adult ministry, college-age kids, that grew from 100 to 1,000 in just three or four months. What are we going to do when we're not struggling to fit another hundred people in a room? But a miracle just took place and the whole city knew the person. And he jumped up and was completely transformed. And now thousands of people, maybe tens of thousands of people, are on our doorstep saying, Okay, I know he's real. I want this. We're going to have to position ourselves for great change. And sometimes, as, as willing and as hung, for, to do that as I am and as hungry for what God is about to do as I am, There is still a part of me that when I process and meditate on this, it becomes a very sobering thing. I am desperately trying to prepare my heart for what God's about to do. There are people, there are types of people I don't even like. And I know I'm going to have to disciple some of them. There are people that if I had my way, I'd probably send them to Cuba. (laughs) But I probably will find myself weeping over some of them and fathering them in the kingdom. And they will come into our gatherings with a lot of baggage. Have you seen the Jesus Revolution? How many of you have seen it? even though that was a very small part of the Jesus People movement that, at the Calvary Chapels, because this happened in thousands of churches and millions were saved. But it is a good picture of the challenges that are coming. Because in the Jesus People movement, these, these kids were sitting around smoking joints talking about Jesus. You know how I know? And I inhaled. (laughs) I I inhaled. (laughs) So he was literally capturing the imagination of a generation. And though they knew nothing about him, they had no measuring stick for what he liked or didn't like, they just wanted peace and love. And so literally, sit around the the room or the campfire, what do you think about this Jesus? And you know, it was just like like Jesus when he walked the earth with with the prostitute, you know. I mean, it's like he didn't run these hungry people off because they smelled bad or they still smoked joints or they were still sleeping around living with some, the fifth guy that they weren't even married to now. He was thrilled to go out of his way. So this is about to happen. He's going to do what we can't to awaken their hunger level. And he's going to show them that he's real. Through signs and wonders and personal things he does with them. And and they're, they're going to start seeking and searching And we're going to have to be ready to lay our lives down to disciple and steward a third great awakening. I mean, you get to the point where you're you're, you're 67 years old and you've, you've averaged traveling to 70 cities a year for the last multiple years. And you're just feeling worn out. And you just you just get to a point where you think, I'm going to slow down now. I'm not going to retire. I'll never retire. But I'm going to slow down now. 
I'm going to be very selective and just because I don't want to stretch this thing out, you know. I don't want to wear myself out prematurely, and so I'm going to I'm going to slow down now because I feel like we're getting close to this revival, and my forerunning gathering thing can sort of shift because we're about to move into this, and now now you don't forerun, you build, and you father. And then these posts come along. I had no intention of doing these posts every day. I had no intention of doing five days a week. I had intention of just doing them for a couple of months during the elections, and we pray for the election process in, in 2020. And then when 400,000 people a day were, were watching these and praying with us, and they started begging, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. And I said... I don't know what to do with this, Lord. And quite honestly, maybe this will surprise some of you. So since I'm just trying to be brutally honest with you tonight, I didn't really want to do it. I spend probably five to six hours on every post. I added 30 hours to my work week overnight. And I said... I can't do this. I, I. So I, told, I, I, I was leaving for a meeting in Arkansas. And I you know, had gotten the post in advance, two or three done, and work until midnight. And I came to, to, to the house and told Cece, I said, I can't do this anymore. As soon as I get back on Monday, we're going to talk about how to phase this out. But my exact words were, I can't do this anymore. And she kind of, she understood. She said, okay. Even though she didn't think I was supposed to stop. But she knew I'd get ticked off if she told me that. So I hate it when she's right about this stuff. (laughs) Which is most of the time. So I get to Arkansas, and a lady, when I walk in the church, into the green room, a lady runs toward me from across the room. She's crying. Oh, you don't know who I am. I just want to meet you and thank you. Okay. So she tells me her name. I recognize the name. Didn't know her, but I recognized the name. Because that week, we had prayed on the Giving 15 uh, post, one of the posts. I wrote about a bill that in Arkansas that the, the legislature was trying to pass that would position them so that when... Roe was overturned, Arkansas would become an abortion-free state. And I knew the man that had written the bill in the Senate, and she was the member of the House that co-sponsored it. So that week, we had prayed for them by name, and we prayed for the passing of this bill. So she ran to me, and she was crying, and she said, I just want to tell you, I'd come to the point where I was telling the Lord, I can't do this anymore. Well, then I was suspicious because she's using my language. And I know the way God works. He's about to deal with me, okay? And she said, the, the threats on my life and on my children and my grandchildren and the lawsuits and the vicious attacks relentless against me personally, she said, and my family. And she said, I I told the Lord, I I just can't do this anymore. And then she said, I got up, fixed my cup of coffee, turned on the your give him 15 post, and then she said, she starts crying more. And she says, and I heard my name. I heard my name. And you started praying for me by name. And I knew tens of thousands of people across this nation would be praying for me today by name. And she said, I told the Lord, 
okay, I'm going to make it through this. And she left, and I looked at Lord and I said, you don't even fight fair. <laughs> so my point is, he made it clear to me that I need, I need to shift my life now. And he would show me how to do that, because he doesn't want me to work 80 hours a week. He wants to show me what I need to lay down, what I need to change, and how I need to think differently so that he can move me into a new phase of what he's doing and what he needs for me to do. And I'm still in that process, but I'm in that process, and I'm doing it. And I've told the Lord, I'm sorry for complaining. And I, won't, I'll, I, I will stop complaining. And you'll teach me how to do this. 